guys it is john fibonacci welcome to my youtube channel uh today's topic is search and destroy trading all right so before we get started please go ahead and give the video a like make sure that you guys are subscribed so that way you do not miss future content all right so yes like i said today's topic is search and destroy trading so what exactly is that right and uh let's get into it so what is a search and destroy day, right? Um, that's how I know it. Uh, I didn't name this. Uh, I didn't take it, you know, take a different concept and rename it. All right. This is coming straight from the original source. All right. So here it goes. According to George Angel's book titled How to Triple Your Money Every Year with Stock Index Futures. All right. 1984. Um, a search and destroy day is, quote, when both previous day's high and low would be taken out. Now, of course, there's some text prior and text after, uh, but taking that portion of the sentence makes the most sense. <laughs> All right. Um, and, and trust me, guys, you can actually go purchase this book. You can go read it. It's on page 217. It's actually on multiple pages. Um, the topic is discussed throughout uh, the book. All right. But for this particular example, yes, uh, page 217. All right. When the both or excuse me, when both the previous days high and low would be taken out. Now, if you're not familiar with Already, George Angel is one of the first authors to write about um, the floor traders that would gun for stops, all right, which means basically they would finesse the market. I call it manipulation, all right. They would uh, essentially manipulate price to take out traders, right? Where are those stop losses resting? And uh, basically, that's where the market would move to, right, to take people out. And so I believe that's what he means in this quote, um, when the high and the low would be taken out. That's what that means. They're manipulating price. They're moving price. They're finessing it to uh, take traders out of the marketplace. All right. That's my interpretation. That's how I take it. Um, and then that's essentially the framework for the way that I trade the indices, right? Now, it's not just that, you know, of course, there's other things. Um, and obviously on this YouTube channel, you know, I share other things like Fibonacci logic, you know, stuff like that. So, um, but this is definitely a big part of it when it comes to the indices. So um, if this were a house, right, the foundation of the house would be market manipulation. All right. And then uh, building upon that uh, later, you know, afterwards, um, that's when you get into the other stuff like the um, Fibonacci logic and stuff like that. But the it's built upon market manipulation is what I call it, because um, that's what I believe it is. All right. So there it is. All right. So we're going to be taking a look at uh, an example Um you know, drawn out first, and then we'll head into some live charts. So uh, basically, this is just, you know, down movement in price. Uh, it works the same way for up movement as well. Uh, I just so happen to draw it this way, okay? So what I would be focused on is two different things, all right? So like, say we're heading into the next day. Like, say this particular day was Monday. So we're anticipating Tuesday's price action, right? Say it's Monday afternoon. Maybe the markets have been closed for a little bit. Or maybe it's Monday night or even Monday London, right? Which technically would be Tuesday's London, but you get what I'm saying, right? So we're anticipating what's going to happen on Tuesday. So this would be Monday's high, right? The previous day's high. 
Uh, that's one thing. And so, so the next thing would also be the previous day's low, right? So both the low and the high of the previous day. Now, when you actually get into price action, um, depending on where the current price is at, in the range, um, you can anticipate where price is most likely to go first. All right, uh, and I'll get into that in just a second. Um, hopefully I don't forget. I, I do want to make that a point in here as well. But nonetheless, as I stated, right, the market looks to take out traders, right, according to George N. Joe, who was actually a floor trader as well, okay? So we would anticipate that above the previous day's high would be stop losses, right? So in this particular example, if the market is having a down day, that means someone out there, you know, even even retail traders, even regular traders, um, including hedge funds and everything like that, someone out there has a position, you know, from the previous day's high or near the previous day's high who is currently in profit as the market's going lower, right? So if they want to protect their position, um, then they're going to have some sort of buy stop um, above the previous day's high, right? Because that buy stop would act as their stop loss, okay? So there are stop losses above the marketplace for those who are short. Um, and then also for those who are long, let's say long-term traders um, who just, you know, ride the trend or whatever, or even someone who bought the low of the day, you know, they also have their stop losses below a recent low or below the previous day's low, right? Now, that's just um, only part of it. You know, there are other ways that we can continue the discussion on where stop losses are actually at. Uh, but, you know, given just this particular video of search and destroy trading, um, we're going to limit that to just previous day's high and previous day's low. All right. So... Now that you understand that there are stop losses on both sides in the marketplace, right? It's not about what you think the market's going to do. It's not about your bias. It's not about the trade that you're in if you're in one or even if you're not in one. That's even better because when you're not in a trade, uh, hopefully you can think more objectively, right, on what what are other people doing, right? That's the focus here is – what are other traders doing? What are the hedge funds doing? Um, and and if you were to put yourself in their shoes, where would their stop loss be, right? And you have to think about where the stop losses are at, okay? And that's kind of the whole point. So moving forward, you understand that there's stop losses on both sides of the marketplace, all right? So this, when it comes to search and destroy type trading, right, a search and destroy day, uh, we can anticipate one of two things to happen, all right? So in the example here, um, the market would then move higher, making a new high, thus taking out um, the previous day's high. So again, like I said, for those who are in profit in short positions, right? Short positions are in profit as the market's going lower, so their stops are going to be above a recent high or above the previous day's high. So what happens is price will make a new high, trigger those buy stops, or essentially take out the short sellers. And in certain conditions, you can expect the market to then trade lower, right? Which would be a price reversal, all right? Uh, and just for sake of conversation, I know I've said this time and time again, and I've said it in previous videos, but maybe this is your first video of mine, or maybe you missed some of the other ones, but I do want you to consider something, right? For those of you who have been trading for a while now, six months or more, something like that, who actually have some history, I want you to think about how many times have you been stopped out only to see price reverse on you? Right. Like you got stopped out at the low of the day or you got stopped out at the high of the day. Right. Why do you think that occurs? Right. Why do you think that occurs? It's a real thing, guys. All right. There's a, and there's a method to the madness. All right. Uh, so scenario one, price goes higher, takes out the stops, and then you get a price reversal. 
okay so scenario two is almost no different it's just uh, pretty much opposite of the first one all right where you have maybe the market going lower first taking out the previous day's low those who are long are getting stopped out of the market only to potentially see a price reversal and then trade to the upside right and that's why I said, you know, how many times have you has that happened to you where you get stopped out and then the market goes your original direction, right? That is on purpose. And that's why I call it market manipulation. That's what I believe it is. Manipulation of price. Okay? So yeah, pretty much the opposite of the of the uh previous example where the market takes out the previous day's low and then reverses to the upside. All right? So now that you have that image in your mind or maybe you even uh, drew it on a piece of paper or something um, now we can see that in a previous live price action example okay so here we are looking at the micro e-mini s p 500 index futures this is the march 2021 contract uh, for those who are aware uh, or maybe you're viewing this video way after it's been produced. Uh, today is January 20th of uh, 2021. All right. Now, this price action wasn't from today. This was uh, a couple weeks ago. But nonetheless, uh, the micro e-mini S&P. All right. That's what I like to trade probably the most often outside of currencies and currency futures. So here it is. Okay. So with, with the... Uh, Example that I just showed you, right? You would have to note uh, or at least annotate the previous day's low and the previous day's high. So you can look at this chart and hopefully you're able to tell what the low and the high is of the previous day. Okay. So moving forward now, all right, if you need a little bit of help, you can pause the video, but I'm going to go ahead and move forward. All right. Next up, we see that the price trades through right the previous day's low which is where the eyeball is at okay so you see that right where price essentially drops lower that you see this big let me just use this you see this candlestick here right it just opens and then immediately trades the lower right so that's how you know that the market is being manipulated for stops it's not just casual price it's quick movement to the downside right quick movement to take out those orders or to even uh trigger sell stops for traders who are trying to catch the market going lower all right and then so you can see that price drops lower and then it immediately reverses higher right so the stops have been taken so if you are anticipating a search and destroy day right then where can you expect for price to go next well, if it's already taken on the previous day's low, where, where's the upside objective? Okay, so here it is where if you had noted the previous day's high, we see that the previous um, day's high was taken. So yes, that particular day on the 8th was a search and destroy day. Okay, the market took out the traders on the downside and then went to the orders on the upside. All right. Now, in this type of environment, typically what I like to see is actually for price um, to take the low, take the high, and then actually come down into the middle of the range. Uh, that's what you want to see um, in that type of environment. But since we are looking at indices, right, since we're looking at the S&P, uh, that particular market is almost always bullish. So you typically don't get that type of environment um, as much as you do in Forex, at least based on my studies. Um, maybe you study more often than I do, or maybe you study uh, currencies more than I do, so maybe you can uh, you know, agree or disagree, but I, in reality, it's really up to you, all right? But based on my studying of the markets, um, I see the search and destroy type trading uh, or days more often in currencies than I do with the index features, but it still happens with index futures and since literally the book from George Angel is written about stock index futures then I thought it was appropriate to actually include stock index futures <laughs> all right so there it is
But moving forward, we'll take a look at another example. All right. So here is another previous live price action example. Uh, this time, we're actually going to be taking a look at the micro e-mini NASDAQ 100 index futures. Okay. And again, uh, the same contract delivery month, uh, March of 2021. Now, this is a five minute time frame. It's a little bit more zoomed out, but hopefully the previous day's high and the previous day's low can be seen here. I think it's very obvious. All right. So here it is. You've got your previous day's low on the 17th and the previous day's high. All right. Annotated for you with the lines. All right. So where price is at, and this is what I was talking about earlier when, when I said uh, when you're in that range, right? So as of this moment, the market is currently uh, about in the middle, right? Because we see the low, we see the high, or even this low and this high, and we see where price is at relative to the, the, the screenshot at the time that this was taken, right? It's, it's kind of in the middle, uh, probably leaning a little bit more to the upside, but you know, like I said, depending on when the screenshot was taken, this is where we're at. Now, if price was say down here, um, then it would be wise, um, or more probable that the market would go lower first. All right. And if the market so happened to be near the high, then it would be probable for the market to trade higher first before going lower. All right. So in in my trading, uh, I usually wait for the market to either gravitate lower and then I can anticipate the low being taken first. Or if it wants to gravitate higher, then it'll usually take the high out first. OK, whichever the market is closest to at the time of when you actually view the chart. All right. But nonetheless, um, I'll go ahead and show you what happens next. So here we see that the high was taken. Right. And you, you kind of see what I mean when you got to wait for some candlesticks to be printed and you see how it, it slowly gravitates towards the high. And it's a very quick movement jams right up there to the upside and then comes back down again. All right. Now, later, this looks at, this actually looks like London. OK, so um, for the indices, I usually wait for New York. Right. So I want to wait for the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, to open before I'm trading the futures, all right? And then so uh, when the stock market actually opens, uh, this is when we see the NASDAQ take out the high, previous day's high, but it also takes London's high as well. So for those of you wondering about, you know, well, if the previous day's low and high gets taken, does the session's highs and low get taken too? Well, I'll leave that up for you to, to decide, all right? But nonetheless, um, keep to the topic of discussion, which is just the high and low of the previous day. All right. So nonetheless, the high gets taken here, right? So what do you think is going to uh, happen next? Typically, I don't like to see indices short. I don't want to short the indices because they're more often bullish than when they are bearish. But uh, here we go. Okay. So on this particular day, on the 18th, the high was taken. And then later in the afternoon, uh, towards lunchtime, we see the previous day's low here get taken. It price does reverse, fails to make a new high here, and then drifts lower and then ultimately collapses um, and really takes out the previous day's low. All right. Now, th this day is kind of weird because it, it actually took the high, the low, and then came all the way back up again um, near the close of business. So, yes, this was a beautiful search and destroy day where the high was taken and the low was taken. And then, um, like I said in the previous example, what you want to see in this type of environment is for the market to trade back into the middle of the range. So if you're wondering, like, well, where should I be buying? Where should I be selling? Uh, or shorting well I mean there's other you know concepts to use um, or you can just you know take the low drop a certain number of points and maybe buy it you know you might take a little bit of drawdown doing that but um, or you can just wait for the high to be set maybe shorter retracement we don't really get that here uh, or same thing for the low where you can wait for the low to be set, make a new high, and then play a retracement to go higher. But this is an intraday chart, so it really just depends 
on uh, the setup, but that's for you to study in your own charts, and that's not really for me to explain because we'll be here all day. All right, we'll be here all day, and I know you guys got things to do and stuff like that, so there it is, all right? But yeah, guys, so we're almost near the 20-minute mark. That will pretty much wrap it up for today, guys. Search and destroy type trading, taking out previous days high, taking out previous days low, and in those environments, that's the type of price action that I can anticipate. So the secret is really understanding when you get to this type of environment. All right. So if you want some homework, guys, you can go ahead and study price consolidations. Okay. If you go to the daily time frame or even the one hour, whatever time frame you want, when you can see consolidation periods, study that. Right In trending markets, this can happen, but it happens more so in consolidating markets. So that's for your own studies. Go and do that. I highly suggest it. That's going to be a better teacher uh, than I or anyone else can ever be. All right, is yourself and studying the market. The market is the best teacher. All right. So I'm um, going to go ahead and shut it down, guys. Thanks again. Uh, if you haven't already, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. Uh, I would appreciate that and go ahead and watch some other videos. Thanks guys.